Tensions between Israel and Hamas is not slowing down. Palestine, it's such a mess right now that 400 people got killed in a hospital. You just recently did History of Hamas, Hezbollah, and ISIS. You're, you're going to leave basically a lot of people alive who subsequently, you know, hate Israel. So, so PBD, can you please do a similar 25-minute video clip with the citations and everything? This is U.S. Department of Justice. It's a government website. For, for every Hamas member that you kill, how many did you create? Mm -hmm. And if... The Irgun, we know the name Hamas. Hamas would not have existed without the Irgun. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, greetings and peace. Welcome to the Dean Show. We got a very special guest in the Dean Show studio. We're going to be talking a, a lot around what's happening, current events. And uh, without further ado... This is the Dean Show. Dude, I love you, man. I love all the work that you're doing. When I was ready to talk about it, I would only talk to yes. And I was explaining how much respect I have for the faith of Islam. Welcome to the Dean Show. The Dean Show. Dr. Shadi, how are you? Alhamdulillah, very good. Wa alaikum salam and, and thank you for uh, having me over. How you been? Very good, very good. been watching your uh, program for uh, uh, decades now. Mashallah, it seems like it's mashallah. since I was in college. But mashallah, you kept it up and it keeps growing and growing. It's good to see it uh, Al alhamdulillah. flourishing and advancing, mashallah. Thank you, thank you, alhamdulillah. Uh, so I watched a uh, particular video that you made. It was very interesting. You just recently did History of Hamas, Hezbollah, and ISIS. I recommend people watch it. I'm holding up on my iPad, U.S. Department of Justice. What about the history of Israeli terrorist organizations? So, PBD, can you please do a similar 25-minute video clip with the citations and everything? This is U.S. Department of Justice. It's a government website uh, outlining terror out of Zion. All of this is started because of terrorism performed by Zionists. The Irgun, we know the name Hamas. Hamas would not have existed without the Irgun. In other words, all the resistance, all of this resistance, all of this hatred, all of this grievance would not have existed without organizations like the Haganah, the Irgun. How is the Haganah different from what Hezbollah is today? And you actually sent a message to someone who um, I got to uh, spend a little bit of time with, a very nice man by the name of Patrick Ben David. Mm -hmm. And for our viewing audience who doesn't know, I'm, I'm going to just jump into this clip right now. Sure. And it revolves around this video that he made regarding the history of Hamas, Hezbollah, and uh, ISIS. Tensions between Israel and Hamas is not slowing down. Palestine, it's such a mess right now that 400 people got killed in a hospital where one side is saying Israel did it, the other is saying Hamas did it. President Biden had to go to meet with Netanyahu and have a conversation. Even in a meeting, he says, well, with the recent events that happened, we're pretty confident that it was Hamas that did it, but we're looking into it. It's that you didn't do it. Like, that's what Joe Biden said to Netanyahu in his face, which was kind of interesting. And then to the point, 2.2 million people were talking about the Gaza Strip, one of the most densely populated places in the world. 75,000 people live within a square mile. No food, no water, no electricity, no hospital supplies. Since the night, they've had none of that. They're being pushed down. Imagine the viruses, the sickness. All of this stuff is taking place. At the same time, Russia's now getting involved. Hezbollah's commenting. Iran's been involved. U.S. is sending 2,000... So you saw this video. I saw the video, and more importantly, I had seen a lot of his other clips, mm -hmm. and he came across to me as a very fair-minded guy. And because he seems like a guy that you could talk to, um, that's when I felt like, hold on a second, he's telling us in this clip, he's telling us all about who was Hamas, who was Hezbollah, uh, who was ISIS even. Okay, And then uh, at the end of the clip, he's saying, listen, we got to be level-headed and use our, our fair judgment and not be uh, attached to our tribe only and only support our people only. Mm -hmm. Well, if I bring these two together is I should request of you to 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 look at the whole history mm -hmm. and realize that if you think these are terrorist groups and I'm not going we're not going to debate that part right now but Israel was initiated and expanded through terroristic means uh before being an official nation by almost in a sense bullying the British into uh reenacting their Balfour declaration which many people don't realize they took it back. The, Brit the British actually took it back, the Balfour Declaration, and released a white paper that said, no, 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 we're not having a Jewish state, only 75,000 Jews. 
and then the rest is just going to be a regular state mixed with whoever lives there. Yeah. The Haganah is a terrorist group. They were meant to defend uh, the Jews. They start as a militia in Palestine, and then they started blowing things up. Right? They started blowing things up, including the 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 cap the base where the British were. So, by any legal definition, it's also a terroristic group. So, if the call is to be fair and balanced about things, then look at the whole history of the conflict. Not come, you know, you walk on the scene and you see one guy punching another guy. That's not the whole scene. Mm. That's not the whole You want to see the whole picture now. You need to see the whole picture. And I would only, you know, talk to him in the sense that, or, you know, make a video back in the sense that I believed him to be a, like a, a fair guy. And it's not just that. Now, this is coming from, I mean, this is a, you're a religious community leader now. You're someone who's a resident scholar yeah. uh, at in New Jersey. In New Jersey, yeah. So you're a community leader there. And now you're actually sending this. He's actually getting now uh, Muslim. You got Muslims who are watching him. Community leaders actually sending him messages. I mean. Uh, it's a big step forward for Patrick. He's uh, yeah. I mean, he's getting community the attention of the Muslim uh, leaders. Well, he's definitely America. he definitely got Muslims' attention a couple times. Um, so it's a good thing. It's a good thing. He got my attention uh, with a clip that he said some things about Muslims being the ones who are going to have families in the future. Yeah, they're standing up to moral causes. They stand up to to, to for the honor of their messenger. Mm -hmm. Peace be upon him. And he had a very respectful things to say, but really nice things to say about Muslims. Yes, I said, "Oh, I want to listen to this guy." Right, start listening more and more. And his coverage on the Palestine thing, he he's always he has a, a one of the members of his show, mm -hmm. but he's only that member of the show is an Israeli citizen, I believe. He's always going to Israel. He's only given him one side, right? Even in this video. Right. It was there wasn't look like he was trying to bash Muslims or anything like that. He's not so agenda oriented. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I felt like, you know, he's somebody who should also make a video on uh, the past. Now, I don't know if he can. Uh, people have allegiances. They have friends and no one's without bias. Right. And so um, that's where I felt that uh, he should really highlight both sides. Mm -hmm. If it's really truly about being fair, let's go back to the two groups, the Haganah and the more extreme group, the Irgun. That's a good point because in the video he talked about the um, resistance group Hamas, even the history of the ISIS mm -hmm. and then uh, Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you're saying is, okay, good. And you were in the video, you're talking about, okay, you're giving some certain facts and data and whatnot. Yeah. Now show the other side, the flip side. Now mm -hmm. the other ones who actually, are you, because of... These groups, it started these groups. Yeah. Is that right? That's exactly it. So you, wow. you're when you have the, the, the smaller group, the embattled group, misbehaving, even just to take uh, to accept the argument, right? They're all misbehaving. They're only taking hostages and doing these attacks. Let's just accept that as a hypothetical. Uh, I'm not saying that that's not true, that that didn't happen, but people may uh, um, dispute yeah. The exact details of how those hostages were treated, blah, blah, blah. But let's say that that small embattled group is doing all these acts. That, the best thing I heard is that is the, the secondary infection. The little guy, when he fights punches back, that's a secondary infection. That can only be triggered by a primary infection, right? The source of why that person is frustrated in the first place, right? So if, if, if why go into a house and a kid is misbehaving, children aren't born misbehaving chances are he's been treated wrong some way in some way shape and form right nobody goes in and sees a kid misbehaving and just says it's the kid's fault mm -hmm. it's got to be the parents like ignoring him the parents not treating him right someone's bothering him in school and the parents not protecting him it's got to be something so in that world the palestinians are the embattled small group of people right they got no weapons. They got no recognition in the world. No one's helping them. They don't have opportunities in life. They're miserable in their life. They're especially Gaza. So when they're acting out, now there must be a primary infection. Why don't we look at the primary cause, the root of the whole matter? Mm -hmm. And that, you can't help yourself but go into history. You have to go back to 19, to the 40s. Mm -hmm. Nobody should say, oh, let's not go back in the history. 
No, we have to go back to the history. When do these groups start now? These uh, the ones you mentioned, and how come we never hear these groups? Really, you don't hear them in the mainstream media. You don't. You always hear the other ones that you mentioned, but I, most people don't even hear Haganah. Or, and, uh, yeah, Haganah Ergun is now the IDF, and it's been vanilla. That's over. now the IDF. That's now the IDF. Okay. So the Haganah. So you are you saying so uh, the second one? Ergon, they were actually what classified as... They were like a break-off of the Haganah, and yeah. more, but smaller, but more extreme. Okay. Bombed Arab villages, bombed Arabs, uh, killed Arabs, and, and the Arab militias were fighting back, too. Yeah. But they were both fighting each other while the British were busy with World War II. And they were classified terror organizations. They were terror organizations. Yeah. yeah. And and I in that video, I put up a book that's on CIA.gov. Yeah. Right, you quoted that was another thing that yeah. caught my attention. You quoted actually the government agencies yeah. now. So the CIA.gov has put out a book, or they're sharing a book on yeah. their website. When you look on at CIA.gov and you're looking for information on the Haganah, this book comes up, and it classifies them as a terroristic group. Mm -hmm. Right? How are they a terroristic group? Well, they had no official recognition. Like they were not recognized as a government uh, as a government. They were not recognized as anything. They're not legally allowed to be aggressing on anybody. Yes. Yet they did. And they aggressed on the British. And David Ben-Gurion, who's the founder of, uh, of Israel, uh, the first president of Israel, he said directly to the British, when, when in Europe we fight the Nazis together, we're allies. Here in Patters, uh, Palestine, all right, we're adversaries mm -hmm. until you give us the state because the whole thing is in British control now. And the British were influenced to create a city, to, to create a nation in Palestine. Uh, mind you, the reason that they wanted to create a, a, a state in Palestine, sorry, a state, not a city, a state for Jews in Palestine. One of the reasons was that one of them was a Christian. One of the lords, what was his name? I can't remember his name. One of the lords in England was a Christian and believed it was his religious duty to set up uh, a, the, the kingdom of Israel again. Mm -hmm. So that religious part of it always comes in. Yeah. Right? So he was like one of the first evangelicals. He was British. So the Balfour Declaration was the uh, famous document that said, we're going to make a Jewish state. Then they took it back. The Arabs got upset and they took it back. And they said, all right, no Jewish state. You're going to have a regular country, regular secular country, 75,000 Jews maximum. And that was called the white paper where they took it back. And that's where the Haganah and the Ergun got working. And they started launching attacks on the British. Physical attacks, bombs, mm -hmm. hotels, 90 people dead here, 30 people dead there. Et cetera, that was, et cetera. Uh, was it the King David? King David Hotel. So, Is this conspiracy theory? Or no, no, no this is this, fact. These are facts. These are all facts. It's all facts. And they're listed as terrorist organizations. Yeah. In time, the British caved in. And they said, all right, here, take a country, and this is part is Palestine, this part is... Wait, wait, I thought there was no negotiating with terrorists. Yep, that's supposed to be, right? <laughs> uh, they, they capitulated yeah. completely uh, to the demands, and really what pushed it over the top was uh, sympathy, because now Hitler did what he did, right? And now we need to give, you know, the Jews need some break from that, and they need some safe haven from that, so that really pushed it over the top in terms of public opinion, mm -hmm. All right? So they get the, st they, they, they get the country, and here's where um, things really start to, to, to become nasty. And I recommend everybody watch a movie called 1948, Creation and Conflict. 19... 1948, crea Creation called, and Conflict. Is this on YouTube? It's on YouTube. It's 1948, about Creation and, and Conflict. Creation if, and Conflict. Yeah. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, that's a title. But if you t but type it in, you'll get the exact title. Mm -hmm. And up till now, you're like, okay, look, the British, they, 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 they took the country um, after World War II. Okay. We could get into that, but they took it as part of spoils of war. When you lose wars, there are consequences. Yeah. They then now are going to give part of it to Israel and part of it to the Arabs, right? To the Jews and the Arabs. Uh, they give the bulk of it, about 70% of it, to the Jews. And they give the sort of desert part of it to the Arabs, who outnumber them, right? Uh, so they gave 70% to the Zionists. Yeah. And 30% uh -huh. 
to the Arabs. Yet, uh, two strange things happened. The first thing is that the Arab part was divided up. It wasn't one contiguous piece of country. Yeah. Secondly, it wasn't given a status as a nation. Like it wasn't given, you know, now you're, you're, the, you're the conquering people of the world, right? And you're the ones assigning who's a nation and who's not. So the Arabs are in like disarray. So in contrast to that, the Zionists were not in disarray. They were very well organized. They were determined. They had great willpower and they prepared. They did all, they took all the esbab of success, mm -hmm. right? The means that make you successful. And when they were declared a state, then the Arabs started raiding them, started fighting them. Any cars going by, trucks, tr transport, they started waged a war basically against them. And in order to protect the, the vessels of the nation, the highways, the David Ben-Gurion said, all right, the, the border towns, we got to mop up. Any towns that's in the border. So they started going down all the towns, the, the Arab towns that are on the border of this new Israel and uh, Palestine, and they started raiding them. And the famous one was um, uh, Dir Yassin. This is the famous one that's quoted all the time in the histories. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I'm saying this is that not everyone has to be a historian, but this stuff is so out there, it will only take you three weeks to be educated on the subject. Uh, this year called the Nakba, the 1948 catastrophe, year of the catastrophe, the IDF, now Haganah, now the IDF, went through all of these, the, these cities, many, many, many villages, many villages, and cleaned them out, cleaned them out, cleaned them out. In one testimony, a guy said, we were cooking, right, with a big oven, and a soldier came into our house, and he said, throw your son in the oven. He said, no. He said, then I will. He threw the kid in the oven. شفت هالمنظر ما تمش فيها حيل من مرة يعني بعدين مسكوا الأب حطوه وراه قالوا له الحق ابنك أنا جيت عاديت قلت هلا بيمسكوني ومت أركض. You saw the clip? Yes. That's a testimony, right? And that and that's actually that <coughs> where you're getting that from. That's an Israeli film producer and historians. They put this together. They put it together. Yeah. Based off the evidence that was done by the Israeli mm -hmm. himself. Yeah. Teddy something. Israel's perception of itself mm -hmm. is of a very decent, liberal, uh, peace-loving country uh, which was surrounded by predatory Arabs and it had no choice but to stand up and defend itself. So this is a defensive war and uh, there is great reluctance to look at the dark side of this war, particularly at the eth ethnic cleansing that happened in 1948. The broader historical context for this film is the ethnic cleansing of Palestine. Uh, in 1948, uh, over 500 villages were, Arab villages were destroyed. 750,000 Palestinians were made refugees. Benny Morris counted 28 massacres, of which Tantura is only one. So it's not an isolated episode. Mm. That's called the document is called Tentura. Yeah. That's also in uh, the original testimony of that is in 1948, the movie or the documentary. Wow! So very vicious things happen. But look, you know what's interesting? This uh, I often see this projection of them, these certain people um, doing these evil and disgusting things, and now they're trying to project it as if you know we heard this thing and they put this stuff out there that certain yeah. people are doing this. They try to put it on a certain uh, resistance group, but then. They're the ones that are actually doing it. And there's no evidence now that, because I think this was also an accusation that yeah. now there was someone putting... It was a reverse, was, 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 was uh, accusation was made. And what we've seen is there's a lot of accusations made, but all the footage is one way. Like the actual evidence, the, phys the accusations are just words, right? Yeah. But the actual footage 
is all coming out of one place. Mm -hmm. Like it's all coming out of Gaza. So uh, to see why the Palestinians are inflamed, okay, why they have a a grievance, these things don't go away. Just because it happened in the past doesn't mean it's going to go away. Mm -hmm. And the one who decides if it's going to go away is the one who's attacked, right? So the, if you have a chain of generation after generation who carry the knowledge that this happened to us, carry the belief that this is oppression that needs to be redressed, and carry the desire to fix things, you can't ever say, oh, enough time has passed, let bygones be bygones, uh, which is something that many people say. They say, mm-hmm. oh, hold on, you're taking us down a path of history and we're going down that why don't we just let bygones be bygones and live well the answer to that is that you don't get to decide that the victim side get to decide that right they're the ones who get to decide listen enough time has passed we all moved on right and so uh it's you know it's one of those claims that's repeated often oh come on just let it go let's all start living right it's not up to you to decide that and clearly the palestinian people the arab people And the Muslims overall, all Muslims, have not let it go. Mm -hmm. They haven't let it go. And it all starts in uh, in what you're going to see. You're talking about the Nakba now. The Nakba, yeah. Yeah. No one's let it go. No one's let all of this abuse go. Do you think um, a root of that is because there's a denial of it also? There's a denial of it. And, and there's no remorse for it because you've seen a lot of these soldiers who are interviewed. You would think they're like in their 80s, 90s, and they're laughing about it. Do you see clips They're of them? They're proud of it. Yeah, do you see They're clips like, of They're not like, look, we, we were stupid, you know, yeah. please forgive us, repentive, remorseful. Yeah, you see that, and you see some people who have a conscience, but a little too late, too little too late mm-hmm. with that. And here's the thing that when you're dominating, and you clearly are dominating, you really should be smart about it. Fill the bellies of the people. Give them some careers, right? Give them some opportunities. Maybe the next generation will soften. Mm-hmm. That's like the right way to do this. Elon Musk made a really good point. Yeah. Did you see Elon Musk? No, I didn't was see saying? That. Elon Musk was saying, we can go ahead and uh, let's play the clip so you can okay. see what, what he's talking about. And it kind of goes in line with what you're saying. Deploy acts of kindness. Yeah, conspicuous acts of kindness that, that, with, that are unequivocal, meaning that can't be somehow, because Hamas will then, their response will be, oh, it's a trick. Therefore, you have to counter how how is not a trick. This ultimately fights the broader force of hatred in the in the region. Yes, and I'm not sure who said it. It's an apocryphal saying, but an eye for the for an eye makes everyone blind. Now, now that neck of the woods, they really believe in the whole eye for an eye thing. Um, but I mean, you really have if if you're not going to just outright. Commit genocide like against an entire people, which obviously would not be acceptable to to, to uh, really shouldn't be acceptable to anyone. Um, then you're, you're going to leave basically a lot of people alive who subsequently, you know, h- hate Israel. So really, the question is like, how for for every Hamas member that you kill, how many did you create? Mm-hmm. And if you create more than you killed, you've not succeeded. That's the you know the real situation there. Um, and it's safe to say that if you know, um, if you know, if if you kill somebody's child in Gaza, you've you've, you've made at least a few uh, Hamas members who will die just to, just to kill an Israeli. That's the situation. So, <clears throat> but but I mean, this is one of the most contentious subjects. One could possibly discuss, but but I, I think if if the if the goal ultimately is some sort of long term peace, one has to be look at this from the standpoint of over time, are there more or fewer uh, terrorists being created? He covered everything there, essentially kind of that that we were talking about. What, what we were talking about now? Yeah, when when we look at these pictures. Um, Baby, uh, a girl, five-year-old girl, she's crying her eyes out. Uh, a boy, now he's got two legs uh, cut off, right? Because now, su- supposedly now, there's a type of bomb that releases blades. And that took the legs off of a boy. And his family's holding him up, right? With now he's got uh, no legs. So 
you can twist that if you're the IDF, if you're Israel, if you're the Israel lobby in America, if you're like Ben Shapiro, you can twist that all you want that, oh, they put human shields, right? Or the Hamas has a, a, a hospital in the base, uh, their, their bunker is in the basement or of the hospital. It doesn't matter if you twist it. It's not changing the reality that you just created more hatred against you. This is not a smart policy. The smart policy is... Elon Musk is saying mercy. Yeah, the smart policy is... Show mercy. Show some mercy. And it, and it doesn't even have to be genuine. If you're totally political, then you know that money, uh, a bright future, a career, right? Uh, wealth, that's going to make people not want to be militaristic, right? Why is it that America's committed so many atrocities but against Vietnam? There are Vietnamese Americans against African Americans and against Afri there are African Americans against Arab Iraqis against Afghanistan. They're all living here in America. No one's rising up. Not just that it's the, the you, you can't. They don't want to. They're living happily, right? The smart way to go about things is not to create more hatred against you. And it doesn't have to be from a truly, you know, uh, goodwill and some kind of religious spiritual just purely political mm -hmm. soften these people up fatten them up let them have too much to lose right uh, most of regimes in these small countries where like a uh, small mon monarchical family rules a whole country they take nine is 50 percent of the wealth for themselves but they fatten up the citizenry i mean you go to some of these countries they hardly pay anything for gas food is cheap like they're living it up I met a Jordanian one time in the Arab Spring, and we said, hey, when is your turn? When is Jordan? He said, no, no, no we're never rising up, right? He says, uh, I get 17 grand um, dollars, 17,000 equivalent of $17,000 a year from the government, right? Mm -hmm. And I live off that for six months. When it's summertime, I come here into, to America, into Jersey. I drive the ice cream truck around, Right. And that covers the other rest of the, my, my expenses, mm -hmm. right? I hardly, hardly have to work, right? Mm -hmm. So he loves his king. Why? Because his king fattened him up, all right? So uh, same concept. Uh, what you can bend the truth in your imagination as much as you can and try to convince everybody that, no, the, the, they put human shields. They're sacrificing their babies. They mm -hmm. instigated this on purpose so we can punch them back. Uh, Eric Weinstein is one of these people with this imagination. Um, it's not going to change the reality that you just created three, four more generations of hatred. I, I like what, what you said. Um, you said this is very clever. It was very clever, this um, whole term that they got um, right to defend themselves. Yeah. The right to defend ourselves also in the middle of the fight, people walked in. This is what the, this is what the world was. October 7th, people haven't seen an Israel-Palestine conflict for a while, like a big one for a while. All of a sudden, all these new eyeballs on the conflict, and they're seeing one party punch the other, okay? And the other party says, oh, we got the right to defend ourselves. But rewind. And in historical things, rewinding 50 years is like half a page. Like in history books, 100 years is half a page. Rewind a little bit, and you see who's the real aggressor. And this, this, this line, I think, is extremely intelligent, marketing ploy and iblis always that's uses what you mentioned things. a marketing ploy it's a, it's a ploy it's it's a snuck premise in there right yeah. it's a snuck premise in there where the premise is i'm the victim the premise is uh, in this conflict i'm the one being aggressed upon so the man just is walking out he just raped this woman yeah. beat, almost beat her to death he walks he's almost like out the door and she jumps up and puts her exactly. cl claws in his back yeah and now that's a picture we That's get. That's the picture you That's got. a picture that goes on TMZ. But he right? just raped her, beat her, exactly. broke in the house. Yeah. He stuffed his pockets with all her money. Yeah. Can that be a fair That's a, that's a, that's an example. And uh or you see a guy um break throwing a rock at a at a car or or, or, or chasing after someone. Mm -hmm. It looks like he's the aggressor. Hold on. But that's my car. Yeah. Right? That is literally my car. And I can't tell you how many people have gone and taking pictures of homes with Israelis living in it, and show us, oh, see, that was my grandparents' home. This was wow. my parents' home. Wow, you got a ton of these, I mean, thousands yeah. of stories. a lot of stories like this. So now you got a guy chasing down a car, right, and and banging on it, 
and he looks like the aggressor, right? Mm-hmm. He looks like the bad guy. But rewind the tape a little bit. That was his car, mm-hmm. right? That was his car. He just got pummeled, his car stolen, and that guy's driving off acting civilized. Yeah. So uh, point being, again, with these guys, you can act civilized. You could try to distort reality as much as you can, but you can't alter what the reality is on the ground. Uh, can, can we just... Uh, so going back to where we started mm. ni- before 1948 and i've had uh, reb- rabbis that i've spoken to they testified to this this is documented this is someone who wants to academically look at this uh before 1948 i don't know how many years before before the whole zionist movement jews christians and muslims the rabbis telling me and you know this uh this is in the books that this was a peaceful environment mm-hmm. th- between the three is that correct it was a peaceful environment, and I'll tell you why, because Islam has a milla concept, which yeah. is that Islam being the th- last of the three religions, uh-huh. and I, I really hope uh, like well-meaning Christians and, and, and Jews listen to this, Islam being the last three religions has a law on how to govern the other two religions mm-hmm. if they live under you, right? Now, Ju- Judaism being the first of the three religions logically cannot possess that, Right. Judaism, when the law came uh, uh, to to Moses, the world was possessed of monotheists and pagans. That's it. Two camps. That's it. Uh, there was no concept of monotheists, but what we would say abrogated. Mm-hmm. Abrogated meaning God brought a new law, which means you stop following the old law. We respect it. We honor it. Like having a passport. This is my childhood passport. I keep it for memory's sake. Right. But I can't show it. To customs my childhood passport we all have like 10 passports mm-hmm. eventually in your life you're gonna have many passports but it's a nice document you keep it for, show your kids what you look like when you were young mm-hmm. but that's it you don't use it anymore the technology is different right scans differently it has different yes. ways to be protected and all that uh from counterfeit so that's how we view the previous two faiths mm-hmm. right J- christianity and judaism they were altered the books were not protected if we go further, I mean, this is another topic, but mm-hmm. from the first man, that submission and surrender to one God, that was Islam, right? It's all Islam it's by Islam. the meaning of submission it's, to one God. Yes. And, and then man, man-made man religions came up. They had So even this is now acknowledged that there's laws to, yeah. in the Sharia, God's law, to protect these. They have rights. Yes, these two... They can't have a House Senate come and vote and take away their rights, can we they? We can't. No. In, in, it's in the Quran and in the sayings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, set in stone that these two abrogated religions, while we hold them to be abrogated, they do have a status with us because mm-hmm. they are attributed to Prophet Abraham and they yeah. do talk about Prophet Jesus and Mary and Moses. And the Quran says you know, the, these temples and places of worship that utter the name of Allah. Uh-huh. right? Just the fact they utter the name of Allah, not some pagan gods, that is the reason that they're given these respects, right? Yeah. And this is historically proven. Jerusalem, the Salahuddin Ayyubi, you got Omar, one of the mm-hmm. caliphs of Islam, came in and protected the churches. How many, 800 years, keys oh. of the churches are in the Muslims' hands? As, as Let me give you the story. Please. Uh, uh, our second Khalifa, Khalifa is like the, the successor. Yeah. This is the Prophet, peace be upon him, Abu Bakr, Omar. Yeah. Omar comes and... He goes to Jerusalem. Yeah. And the Muslims at this point have expanded. And he arrives at Jerusalem, goes to the patriarch there, and where is their their center? Their church is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Yes. Church of the Holy Sepulchre, he there he meets the patriarch of Jerusalem. Patriarch of Jerusalem uh, knows and has the keys to the furthest mosque or in Masjid al Aqsa. Yes. The yes. third holiest uh, mosque in Islam, by the words of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Now, at that time, the, the Christians had no need of it. Mm-hmm. It was not their temple. It was not their church. They had the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. A little bit f- away from that, maybe a mile or something, not even a long distance, yeah. was uh, an abandoned mosque, an abandoned uh, building. Now, Omar said, this is the mosque that is the sacred mosque. And so the, the, the man gave him the keys. And Sophon- he said, that was Sophronius, right? Yes, the, yeah. the, the, the patriarch. patriarch, yes. So he says, Take, here are the keys and come into our church and offer your prayers here out of respect. Yeah. Now Omar s- says that, thinks that, if I pray here, Muslims in the future 
may say, no, this is like a sacred deep. spot. This is Semi really sacred deep. Think spot. about that now. This yeah. is really profound. He refused to pray there, and he said, not out of disrespect to your church. But to protect the church. But to protect your church. Wow. And he prayed across the street, and the Muslims built a small mosque there. It's called uh -huh. Masjid Omar. Yes. And it's right across from the Church of the Holy Spirit. He could have prayed in the mosque. Then Muslims of today, they say, oh, yeah. that's ours now. Exactly. Because he prayed there, and we're going to confiscate and take it over. Exactly. We so have, he's thinking ahead. He's thinking ahead. Wow. And we also, we have these laws. We have rules of expansion. In Islam, mm -hmm. we don't deny that Islam expands, but there are strict rules. So what are some of these strict rules? If a city, let's say, submits to you, because the empire is expanding, yeah. and the city knows it's going to be gobbled up, right? If that city surrenders to you, Okay, and they say, okay, we join your empire now. Build your mosques. Call the. Call you kill prayer. all the women. Kill you can't the touch children. anything. You, you do like uh, their emalak now. And you can't touch anything. Yeah. Nor, nor can the government take a single piece of land. So listen to this story. We had a scholar in Islam, uh, Imam in Nawawi, and before him, many scholars. I can't even remember their names, but in Iraq, there was a village in Iraq that submitted. Mm -hmm. They said, Muslims, we know you're coming. We're not even going to put up a fight. Okay, come in. And they've joined the Dar al-Islam or the abode of Islam or the, the, the Ummah at, just as a body politic. And they don't have to become Muslim, mm -hmm. right? But they're Can you part translate that as house of peace? Yeah. yeah. The, this, this protected abode that is submitting to God's law. Yeah. And so the governor at that time, Muslim governor, saw a beautiful plot of land that's farming and everything. Yeah. He said, all right, well, we're now we rule. That's ours. I'll take it. The scholar said, you're not allowed to take it, right? You're not allowed to take this. Land grab. A land grab. <laughs> you can't do it you now. You can't do it. Because like they, they're doing now over yeah. here. Like the Zionists doing. Exactly. Land grabs. No. Because you, they submitted to you, right? So you're not allowed to take it. Now, listen to this. There was a market there. Yeah. The scholar asked, where do you guys get your fruit and vegetables from? Mm -hmm. He said, from that land. He went back and he told his family, nobody ever go and buy from that market. That is unlawful food for us. Mm-hmm. It's unlawful because we grabbed those people's land and he would refuse to eat the crops that came from those lands. So expansion has rules. Point being is that the rules of expansion and governance in Judaism cannot possibly, do not include how to govern Christians, how to govern Muslims. It doesn't include It doesn't that. include that, yeah. right? Islam, the Sharia of Islam, does give rules what happens when you conquer a land and you are now the governors of Jews and Christians. And this is with justice. You have to rule them with justice. And here is the justice for them is in all civil matters between you and yourselves, Christians, you appoint a leader. He governs your courts. Unless you aggress against the Muslim, you're, you're, you have a dispute with a Muslim, then it goes to Islamic courts. Uh -huh. But otherwise, this is the Milla. Milla is a small group, right? So Christians, you got your, your little area and you have your governor. Mm -hmm. Now, there's one rule. Mm. Because Islam is governed by the Sharia, God's law, the, the precondition of that is you have to believe in God's law, right? Nobody could come and say, hey, I want to be a governor uh, in the state of Illinois, but I don't believe in Illinois law. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not, you can't be governor then, right? So th you have one condition. You cannot rule unless you're a Muslim. You could take different positions. Mm -hmm. You could take different minister positions. But you cannot rule because you don't believe in the law, right? The moment you say, okay, now I believe in the law. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. There's Allah. nothing worthy of worship except Allah. one God, the creator, Allah. And Muhammad is his messenger. Okay. And this law in the Quran, this is the law how we're supposed to live. Now you can rule. At Jesus' time, you would have said Jesus is the messenger. Yeah. That same statement, la ilaha illallah, and then Moses, and Moses is the messenger at that time. Just to, so people that, get, a, get yes, a better understanding. Correct. At that time... See, the way it is, is messengers are sent. Every messenger that comes, the Quran tells us, every messenger that comes, comes with the law suitable for his era. Humans change. Unlike cats and dogs, cats are cats, dogs mm -hmm. are dogs. But humans are always changing. Our society is growing. Different things are happening, discoveries. So the laws cannot be the same every era. Mm -hmm. So God sent laws to Adam. There was a law for Adam specifically the in first marriage. man Adam first yeah. man for example what was the law to Adam you cannot marry your twin but you can marry your sibling right and when Allah says that you can do something you cannot do something it's cr immediately created in a person a hatred for it in his instinct so that's how now it's populated the race the yeah that's race. how you populate but one generation later I can't do it's that it's canceled anymore. now you canceled. cannot do the same thing the next prophet comes he says okay God has brought a new law 
you don't need to marry siblings anymore. You can't marry siblings, right? Now Moses has a law. You have to follow that law. When Jesus comes, we have to follow him. The Quran says, O messengers, I take an oath upon you. If any new messenger comes, you leave off what you were doing and you follow him. Mm -hmm. Okay? If the messengers were told that, imagine then the followers. Mm -hmm. So Islam's rule on governing Jews and Christians, and in India they govern pagans, yeah. right? Is that you have your own courts, you have your own societies, you can even have your own marketplace, whatever you want, but you are not going to rule because you don't believe in this law. That's why I facetiously said, I have the solution for, for Israel. Yes. Take the whole country, make every Arab there a citizen, and apply Sharia. Your reverse Sharia that live, be happy, have, make money. No politics, no ruling. You can be part of the Senate, you can be involved in the government, mm -hmm. but you're not ruling. T right? t t tell me this uh, for the essence of time now. So we went back, uh, the history there, there's this Nakba that I think it's even in, in the state there, it's against the law to mention, is that correct? That I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know as a fact, but I wouldn't be surprised. We could see if we could fact check this, but I think yeah. this is uh, from doing so many interviews. There's so many things that uh, have come to me, but this is something I can go check. But so this is kicking it off, and you recommended a great documentary. Mm -hmm. This documentary of 1948, it's called Con... Uh, Creation, Creation and Conflict. And Conflict. So people can see now, mistaken, yeah. at one point, living in peace together, Jews, Muslims, and Christians living in peace together. We have a history of being able to protect the churches, protect the places of worship, mm -hmm. to now land grabs starting to happen. Yeah. And we touched upon that, land grabs. People are coming in. Even the Jews at that time were like, hold on, for the Zionists coming in, are, what are you guys planning to do? Mm -hmm. The head the head of the, the head rabbi at that time was against this. Mm -hmm. And they were also now worried because you're going to disrupt our peace. So they're yeah. coming to land grabs and then militias. And, and now we started. Now these, these terrorist groups classified by the government website, Hagan and er Ergo, mm -hmm. the Ergo, they kick yeah. off now, and you have total annihilation of, because the common claim is that they came in and then they all the Arab countries, they combined to try to uh, yeah. fight this off and mm -hmm. to take uh, extinguish them. It's always been Jew versus Muslim, Jew versus Muslim. They're yeah. trying to extinguish them. They won. And that's the common uh, story. Yeah, and and to show so it's a lie. It, 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 it's a lie in the sense that there was no people there. That's also another lie. Yeah, a land without a people, yeah. people without a land. So that's another lie. That's another lie. You might show some footage here. You can see right here. Yeah. That now two former American vessels carrying nearly four thousand Jewish refugees arrive at the port of Haifa, Palestine, jammed like cattle on the rustic craft. The fugitives end their bleak voyage, which began at a Black Sea port. And we went from Italy to Palestine. It was not Israel yet. It was Palestine. Yeah. What? How did you get? You went by boat. By boat. We went Israel. to Israel when Israel was not Israel yet. Two. Testimony to the good relations is that in the movie 1948, there is one village yeah. where the Jewish governor of the village, the governor is Jewish. Yes. He is the one telling the Muslims, we live together, don't leave. Right, mm -hmm. the Muslims are fleeing for their lives. The Palestinians, the Arabs are fleeing for their lives. Uh, so a Jewish governor, yeah, and just, just like now, what we're seeing, they're yeah. fleeing for their lives. Yeah, they're fleeing for their lives. And this Jewish governor was saying, "Hey, I'm not responsible for this." Right? He's a, old. He's lived before the Zionists came in. Uh, I'm not responsible for this. Stay. This is your city. I want to try to protect you. Right? I'll negotiate on your behalf. So also, in the name of fairness, there are. Uh, plenty of rabbis who are against Zionism. This is what blows my mind here. This is very important. Norman Fickelstein, I just interviewed him. Mm. He's someone whose parents survived the Holocaust. He's put his neck on the line. Yeah. He's out there. He's one of the most proficient people, academics in this area. You have Jewish, Israeli historians, rabbis, Orthodox rabbis who are also coming out yeah. and speaking against this injustice. Yeah. Why would they? For what? What's the gain? Yeah, I mean, they in their, in their books, I think they have, from the spiritual perspective, yeah. they have it that Mankind is not supposed to initiate yes. Israel, right? Uh, it's supposed to be divinely initiated by the Mosheikh. Mm -hmm. I think they yes. pronounce it in Hebrew, the Messiah. So that this is profane. This is a profane movement. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that is uh, the Naturakai uh, group. Pretty much that's their thesis mm -hmm. from a purely religious perspective. Then you have purely fair-minded, non-religious Jews mm -hmm. who are just 
as the Quran says, some of the people of the book, you can give them a mountain of gold, they'll guard it for you, right? And some of them, you can't even give them a coin. So from the liberal side of things, you have people who are uh, uh, dead against this and you have plenty. I, I should recommend everyone also watch a, a, a documentary called The General Sun. Miko Pillard. Yes. I've had him on. Actually. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, Miko Pillard, yes. Great. He, he's another person. I didn't see the movie myself, but I wanna, I've, I've, I've been told that I have to see it. That's a, that's a book he wrote. Uh, his father, he was in the IDF. His uh, father was a general in the Israeli army, general. Mm -hmm. And he came from a strong Zionist lineage. Yeah. And his uh, great-grandfather was one of the original signers of the state of uh, yeah. Israel. And, and when you look at the history of Jews and Muslims, when Jews lived under Muslims, where is the history of pogroms? Where is the history of holocausts? Where, there is none. Right? There is none. Because Repeat that again. When J Jews lived for all this time above the Mediterranean in Christian lands yes. and below the Mediterranean in North Africa, Syria, uh -huh. Egypt, uh, Iraq. So we have a good contrast there. Where did the pogroms all happen? Where did the holocausts all happen? Where did the killing of Jews? It didn't happen in Muslim land. It all happened north of the Mediterranean, right? It all happened in Europe. And then they fl they fled persecution, and oftentimes fled to Muslims in to Andalusia Muslims or, Muslims or in Morocco. Open arms, welcomed their cousins, yeah. and brought them in. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, why is this history? This is like almost hidden. It's kind of uh, yeah. You see some of these uh, people, these hate provocateurs who are out there. They kind of you know they want to make this like this is Jewish Muslim. Muslims yeah. hate Jews. They want to eradicate Jews. They push out this propaganda. But the history doesn't show that. The history is totally the opposite, right? Uh, do you, let me ask you: Do yeah. you do you want to annihilate all Jews? Do you hate Jews? I don't hate all Jews. Is this what you preach to your congregation? We we don't we don't hate people just by the relation by the religion. Uh -huh. We're going to hate people based upon oppression, and fighting us for our uh, uh, religion and our land, uh, and our lives. And that hatred, when we say hatred, it has a technical meaning. It's not an emotional meaning. Mm -hmm. It's a policy. It means. On this matter, I'm against you. I will not support you. I will not fund you, right? That's hatred in the Quran. It's a policy, right? And so to th this idea of uh, uh, trying to pit the, the two together is not going to fit for many reasons. I want to, before we conclude, so we have, um, so Elon Musk. Yeah. I think uh, common sense. He's one of the people that are out there that people look at as one of the most intelligent people out there and he's saying that show mercy show mercy uh, to the people have some mercy play the long game some videos that are coming up now i think you've shared some of these um we'll show this real quick uh quick and we'll contrast that with with islam mm -hmm. the point is right here that hashem say do not have mercy on the children kill all their children also why there's no difference between them and their children in 10 years from now these children will attack you on the way Hashem knows, God knows. You kill all men and all women. Even babies who breastfeed. Amazing. All axes, all goats, camels, donkeys. Don't leave anything, any memory from this filthy nation. So that's what the Torah say. Someone is on the way to kill you now or in a year from now. You can kill him even now, a year before. You don't have to wait a minute before. You know this person will kill you. Statistically, that's what it always constantly repeat. So you're allowed to go and attack him first. Is to remember to erase the nation of Amalek. The memory of them even. Not only physically to erase them from the face of the earth. Anything that reminds us about them is mitzvah to dismiss and to erase it from the face of the earth. We assume that it's the Germans after we see what they did in Holocaust, not only to the Jews, to the whole world. And it's not only the Germans, it's most of the European countries. That's where Amalek is. Uh, to be fair now, is he, just refer is he just talking about history of what happened or how in context? What, what do you take uh, from this? I believe that's the Deuteronomy verse. And I believe that what he's referring to is... Moses, not Moses, his generation never made it to the Holy Land, but the generation after. Yeah. And supposedly, we don't know what's true and false of the Torah anymore, uh, but the quote goes, or the law goes, erase, uh, kill all of them, even their kids, even their animals. So there's a completely clean out, cleaned out land. Now, 
People are usually, have you been uh, attacked because uh, certain people, they bring up the term hij um, jihad, you got to modernize the Quran, give it a new modern twist interpretation because they'll quote certain things out of context. But if you just put in context, you say, okay, it makes sense. Yeah. But, you know, God, if, a, if a Muslim imam, you or somebody was talking like this, even yeah. though there's nothing. Oh, you'd we, be <laughs> cooked. Yeah. Yet he's flourishing in Queens. You, you, he's from your he's area. from Queens yeah have you met him I've never met him I don't know if you he know? met he meets Gentiles but uh, would you ever sit and talk with him if, I, I'd like to sit and talk with him I'll yeah. tell you why because he's telling you as it is he's yeah. a type of literal reading now are there people who have an interpretation of this maybe maybe not I'm not a big fan of if, if there's an interpretation it better be clear yeah I'm not a big fan of, let's go around and figure eight uh, uh, Here's what making I don't interpretations. Like. I, don't, I don't like when the Islamophobes and the Islamophobe industry, <sighs> they, they prop up these actors and they'll insist that we take an extreme interpretation when the consensus of scholarship is like, no, 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 it's this way. And they give it the daish or the extreme. Yeah. So I'd rather go with the, the merciful interpretation and then yeah. we can gang up to get this guy more on, on the merciful yeah. side. Well, well, let me tell you, when you're, there's an interpretation, it should be very crystal clear. Yes. Right? Like very crystal clear that this verse is specific to this situation. The proof being this verse, this verse, this verse, this verse. Yes. Right? Uh, I'm not a fan of interpretations that are complex. That means you're BSing me. You're mm -hmm. lying. You're trying to wiggle gotcha. yourself out. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So my question would be to the rabbis, what verse of the Torah abrogates that, qualifies it, limits it, right? What And, and how am I supposed to understand this verse, that's my question. He's a rabbi scholar. There are other rabbi scholars, right? I personally think that uh, the truth is what he said about the Torah. I think that's the, the your, actual from your Jewish knowledge belief. And from yeah. your, wow. I think that's a Jewish belief. Oof. Yeah. But I can't uh, deny that's the, scary, the voice. Man. That's scary, that, that, But and that's what ex that explains what's happening. That explains what's happening in Gaza now. I, my saying that I believe that that's, he's accurate doesn't necessarily mean that I'm right. I just, from what I've seen, where are the con controversies? Where are the verses that counter this wow. of the Torah that say, okay, spare this, spare that, right? Don't kill this, don't kill that. We have that clearly in Islam, like very clearly in Islam. It's, it doesn't take uh, two minutes of research, and you put it up on your show before, of uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said this, 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 this. A any tafsir, which is explanation of the Quran. Is there any, anything in the Quran or Sunnah where it gives you a green light to harm innocent civilians, children, women innocent non-combatants the only person you're allowed to fight is a combatant in islam and if a woman or a priest or a rabbi or a monk or an elderly person picks up a gun and he points it at you he's no longer a civilian he's and a in combatant. islam you're equivalent to what would be like a priest or a rabbi yeah yeah so you're yeah. the learned person that's what people would call hopefully <laughs> some people think so yeah. <laughs> uh but all of us i think in the west or a lot of us i could say myself were always they usually they'll anticipate if you're here they'll see the priest in his outfit uh, and yeah. Be, yeah 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 i mean we, we 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 wear that but sometimes you know we're still students and we're still learning but these things are not up for this, you know there's no they don't need they don't need eight years of study to yeah. know this stuff these basic the lay laws, muslim knows this. lay muslim knows this I'll tell you what they always cite, slay them wherever you see them, mm -hmm. right? And you're going to see in every tafsir, that is a very simple, when you zoom out, it is to a specific period of time, right? Uh, after four months, and they were told, yeah. you know, you have four months to make up your mind because this peninsula is going to be all Muslims, right? Just the Arab Peninsula. Uh, that so that was clearly to that period of time, to that location. So this is in context now, fighting the so pagans. That one is in a context. Yeah. Now, fight those who fight you. Exactly. But don't transgress the limits. Uh, that ayah uh, has a context to that period of time, yeah. to that location. But they'll take this, extract it, and try to put like, oh, right now, today, 2023, that kill your applies. neighbor. Yeah. Now, Crazy. The, the sign of a real interpretation is I can very easily get you the verses that qualify it, abrogate it. Abrogate means it's no longer law. Yeah. It was a law, a policy for a policy for yeah. a period of time. It's no longer a policy, right? I can clearly show it to you. So my question would be, is that the case uh, in the Jewish religion? Fair question. Fair question. Let's bring a rabbi and see, right? Uh, but it would explain the nature of what's happening. Wow. That Palestine must be completely cleansed, right? The, or Israel, the, whatever. That piece of land must be completely cleansed of every Gentile. And, and then you have the... Um...
the uh, leader of this group now, follower of not Pro Prophet Moses, follower of Theodore Herzl, who's the pre the prime minister, he's actually quoting the Bible. Mm -hmm. I heard he's an atheist also, like Theodore Herzl, uh, uh, but I don't think anybody, uh, someone who <laughs> believes in, in the all-loving, most merciful yeah. creator of the heavens and earth is going to do something like this. But he's actually quoting. You saw the um, him bringing up the Amaleks mm -hmm. and quoting the, Bi the Bible. Yeah. And then, and then, so he's just naming cities. Why are you doing that yeah. if you don't want to commit a exactly? If you're genocide? not, if you're not um, calling upon or or hearkening back to your holy book, Imagine, why? Yeah, Netanyahu would call uh, Judea and what he recently called cities in the West Bank said Judea and some other city using biblical names. Why hearken back to why the Bible? Why is nobody going at? Why why aren't the mainstream media? Why aren't this the? Uh, the people, peace loving, you know, um, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, and all this coming yeah. up forward to condemn this. Well, you know, um, it's 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 so interesting. It's uh, polit so politically incorrect to say they're all intertwined financially. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, people make financial decisions. Really, mm -hmm. that's that's the best explanation of it. Yeah. Right. Uh, at the end of the day, of course, it's like politically incorrect to say that they're they're intertwined. But we're gonna start lying and telling. Uh, pretending that the Rothschilds are not a trillionaire family that has been backing Zionism and 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 spreading its lobby throughout the world, right? Mm -hmm. Throughout the uh, Western European and American world and the families like them, right? We're going to start try to try to pretend in the name of being, you know, not saying the wrong thing that yeah. the, the Israel lobby is not the strongest lobby on the earth. Right when you have two authors, two. I mean, you've had pri former prime ministers who come out and actually admitted Jew uh, Israelis themselves. Yeah. People here are called anti-Semitic. Uh, what is your response to that as an Israeli Jew? Well, it's a trick. We always use it. When from Europe somebody is criticizing Israel, then we bring up the Holocaust. When in this country people are criticizing Israel, then they are anti-Semitic. And the organization is strong and has a lot of money. And the the ties between uh, Israel and the American esta Jewish establishment are very strong. Yeah, like the Indo who was it? Indonesian prime minister uh -huh. uh, mentioned something like this before. And he said, you know, they control everything. And then when he was condemned, uh, they brought him on CNN and he said... Um, uh, the the guy said, "You said this. The whole world condemned you. You said they're the most powerful people in the world, and they control the world, and the whole world condemned you." He said, "Well, then you just proved my point." Wow. So, uh, uh, but but, I, but what you said, there's a former Israeli Jew woman herself who mm -hmm. came out. I don't know if you've seen it, and she said, "Yeah, this is what exactly what you're saying." There's the, the I mean the book, the Israel Lobby, is this yeah. thick, right? Written by two Jews, one yeah. from Harvard, one from Chicago. Here. And just documenting for you the the, the depth, right, of uh, influence that, mm -hmm. and it it goes without say. You can't run for anything, be a millionaire, be a trillionaire, and not have in some way, shape, and form cross paths with this lobby, right? You're going to cross paths with them, and they could crush your political career easily. Yeah. They could crush your career in Hollywood easily. They could crush your career in finance and banking very easily, right? And, and many other things. So. Truth is one thing, and I think a lot of people know it, but at the end of the day, people make financial decisions. We're almost out of time. Tell mm. me uh, another thing that Elon was uh, saying. I think it made a lot of sense. He says the more bombs you drop, what was he saying? He the more said, you're creating the resistance fighters. He said for every Hamas, meaning anti-Israel, you know, Palestinian, uh, that you kill, you're going to create more. You're three more, right? Four more. Mm. And... You, that sentiment, I have to say, is is obviously going to be true, right? Because when I see these little kids, I ask myself, one day she's going to be a mom. One day she's going to be telling stories to her kids. One day they're going to sit at the table and teach their kids their politics, their beliefs. That's what people do at the dinner table, right? One of the secrets of eating dinner together, you transmit your politics to mm -hmm. your kids. You transmit your beliefs to your kids. You share stories of history to your kids. What kind of stories is she going to be telling? She's not going to be telling some kind of fuzzy wuzzy story. She's going to be telling them, these people blew your uncle's legs off. These people killed your grandma. Here's the video of me 30 years ago crying in the street. And what do you think that kid's going to do? Mm -hmm. That's my mom that you guys crying and covered in mud like this, crying in a hospital, covered in mud, right? And there's no one there she's crying for, for minutes on end, no one to hold her, no one to hug her. No one to put a blanket on top of her, 
and the only adults around her are equally devastated. So how do you think that kid's going to feel? Uh, people under marketing cannot penetrate the home. You can market, you can lie, you can cover things over, you can pretend they don't exist. You're not going and changing people's homes. And the lie that this is just Muslims trying to eradicate Jews, we've covered that's a lie. It would have happened a long time ago. It would have happened a long time ago in yeah. history. So yeah. they want freedom. Americans yeah. can understand that. We live want the American dream, you know, freedom, liberty for all. These people want the same thing. They want freedom. They want yeah. the freedom to fish, to not have two sets of laws for two different people, yeah. the right of return, uh, someone from New York coming in uh, from your backyard. Yep, yep. Uh, Rubenstein, I think he was called. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah. 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 Uh, did you see those videos? They had uh, 60 Minutes put out where the soldier goes and the guy's he's sleeping in his bed. Yeah. They t take them hostage in their own home at any time. Yeah, I uh, mean, it's... You can if, go on and on with the, uh, the the different types of oppression examples that are... Yeah. That you are can't happening. be somebody who supports, um, is anti-racist uh, against the apartheid of South Africa mm -hmm. and then pretend you don't see the same exact thing happening here mm -hmm. because it's it's the same exact thing and in some cases yeah. it's worse. Yeah, so I, I, I think people are waking up that they're, they're seeing behind this um, these silly excuses that are given, you know, that are parroted out there. But um, we started off with the uh, request for uh, our friend Patrick to go ahead and do the other side to talk about these yeah. uh, these groups as he did yeah. with the other ones that we mentioned. I think this is uh, hopefully he can give some. Uh, he's really good at doing that, putting the statistics. And yeah, facts. yeah. I mean, I hope his um, uh, you know his he's a fair-minded guy, and I hope he does it. And I know people have friends and interests that they don't want to offend, but sometimes also when you're a host at that level of a platform, uh, in order to be taken uh you know seriously by people more seriously he's already taken seriously but more seriously uh when you're fair people love fairness be fair yeah people love fairness and people they start to look down let you know not really fully respect someone who's too agenda oriented everyone has an agenda I and mean, i respect it right let's say he's a christian and he's got a eastern orthodox that's what i'm pushing out fine i respect that but even within an agenda there's fairness mm -hmm. right and even I notice my own biases, right? Like I always cite this rabbi, Yusuf Mizrahi. I say, mm -hmm. look what the, the Torah says. And people point out to me, hold on, there's another rabbi who says the opposite. And I said, okay, fine. I personally think he's representing the Torah properly, mm -hmm. but I could be wrong, right? And there could be another rabbi with another interpretation, and it could be very peaceful after all this. So you got to always, like Imam Shafi put it best, I believe I'm right, but there's a possibility I'm wrong mm -hmm. on certain matters, on matters of discussion. Certain matters are not of discussion. No mm -hmm. one's going to disagree the sun comes from the east yeah. or that God is one and there are five prayers and Hajj is in Mecca. There's certain things no one disagrees on. But on matters of dispute, I believe I'm right, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. right? And that's the approach we have to take, especially in political issues where uh, it's up for grabs and everyone's making claims. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully uh, you guys can share this uh, with our friend Patrick and hopefully he can put something together like he did brilliantly with the statistics and all this other stuff on these these uh, couple groups that you mentioned yeah that would be uh, great to see the root of what caused these other groups yeah, to come out yep. it's common sense thank yep. you very much my pleasure my pleasure thank ahead. you and thank you guys for tuning in and if you'd like to get to the book the root of the matter to see really what the purpose of life is why we've been created to look at what Muslims, what motivates Muslims in life, because a lot of these things now, where we get our values, where we get our principles, in this, is in this book, the Quran. We'll give it to you for free. Go to thedeanshow.com. We'll take care of the postage handling and get it to you, so you can judge for yourself. Until next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. We've all had. I cannot leave without giving you a gift. If you're not yet Muslim and you're tuning in to see what these Muslims are talking about and you like a free copy of the Quran, go ahead and visit thedeanshow.com. We'll take care of the postage and everything and get it delivered to you. And if you still have some questions about Islam, call us at 1-800-662-4752. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.